catch. What's up? How's everybody doing? Man, I'm good. I'm good. good. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thanks. Uh, thanks for everybody jumping on, and uh, definitely uh, appreciate you, Kev, uh, making the time to to jump on with us and uh, let us kind of kind of uh, op open up a little bit today and kind of pick your brain a little bit and share with everybody in uh, in our spotlight series. We've been really excited. Um, you know, this is our, our third spotlight series that we've been able to kick off and the, and the two previous ones were fantastic. And I know today's going to be, to be no different. So we've got, uh, Mr. Jeff Keani with us. And then of course, uh, Kevin Shoemaker joining us from, uh, Greeley, North, North Denver area, uh, somewhere yeah, up there coming in, coming in with us. So appreciate you guys. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, Kevin, I know I'm excited to kind of hear what's working for you. And if you want to give everybody just kind of a little background as far as your business and maybe how long you've been in real estate and just, you know, that whole deal. Absolutely. So, so I've been in, uh, in real estate for 26 years now. Um, started, uh, started actually as a buyer's agent. So I've always sort of been that team centric type guy because I didn't really know any, any different than that. Um, we, uh, we owned a Remax franchise for 12 years. And then uh, my business partner uh, retired, and at that point we sold the franchise, stayed with Remax. Uh, about um, gosh, January of last year, uh, while well, going back into 17, I actually uh, uh, partnered up. Was going to go independent, and partnered up with my Trail Davis, and we created the Trail Davis Group. And then uh, we aligned our 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 business model with uh, with EXP. And so we pretty much are working that Denver to Fort Collins market, it's sort of the Colorado front range is, is our market. Um, but I've always had a team, always been a big believer in the team. We've had uh, you know, a lot of lessons learned through the years of growing the team. Uh, we went from, uh, uh, with our Remax franchise, we had a really, really good sized team. Uh, and prior to the bubble, we were the uh, number one team in a five state region. Uh, we had, uh, uh, 12 agents on our team. We sold 358 homes that year. Um, so, uh, but we weren't profitable. Um, we made a lot of money, but our net sucked. Um, so uh, then we continued to grow and, and worked our way through the bubble and uh, we've done new construction. We've, we've done it all. So uh, um, uh, that's, that's sort of the, uh, the little, the, the quick, the quick and short summary. Yeah. And, and Kev, you know, it's had to be, you know, it's like you, you mentioned a couple of things there, right? Really um, adaptive to kind of the market and what's going on and, and trying to get out in front of trends and get out in front of, you know, really what, what you're starting to see to go on in the market. And uh, of anybody that, I mean, I, I mean, you've, you know, recreated your yourself and your business so many times. Um, it's just kind of second nature to who you guys are, right? You're not, you're not okay with, with just, just never satisfied, I guess, is uh, is kind of a, a good way to put it, and just always looking to evolve. and And who do you, who do you have to become to continue to stay out in front of this ever ever changing business that we're in? Well, absolutely. And I go back to, I've always been a, I've always been a sponge when it comes to learning and surrounding myself by people that are that that have what I want. And I, you know, I believe from a young age when it was when I was a teenager. Uh, and I was in sales. I was 16 years old is when I started, and uh, I started work for my cousin in sales. And I wanted what he had, which was cool cars. And I modeled, so I learned early to model success. And yes. through the years, I, I shared I shared with you, John, yesterday. Uh, Howard Britton was probably one of the first people I started listening to, which is Star Power, in uh, 1994. And I was super excited to get my CD every month with that star power and, and really hear what are the people that are the top of their game doing to be successful. And so through the years, I continue to do that and just continue to learn. And as, as I continue to take in that, that content, it allowed me, I felt to stay about six months ahead of my competition. But whenever I stopped consuming the content, then I, then I all of a sudden within that six month period, I was just like everybody else. I wasn't differentiating myself. And mm. so you know, through those years uh, that, you know, back in 2008, when I uh, started coaching with Kim Reese, and, you know, the same thing is, is, is modeling success and what are other people doing and how can I, how can I copy that instead of reinventing the wheel, whether that was uh, growing uh, from a transaction standpoint, whether it was building our team, um, you know, training our agents, 
you know, all the, all the above, because the market is always changing. And um, you know, whether it's, whether it's trying to adapt to how to attract the best agents to work on your team or, or also adapt to, you know, getting, you know, getting uh, you know, more motivated sellers or, or buyers. So I know Kevin, I mean, in my mind, uh, I know you guys have spent a lot of time in really nailing down the culture in your team, the branding, being consistent with, with that. I mean, you guys talk about Terrell Davis group, right. Um, with EXP, but I know that it's, the Terrell great Terrell Davis group and and uh, you have I think Life on Offense is another brand. So I mean, how many you got? 40, how many agents are in your area? I mean, thirty thousand or something. We have thirty, I believe, right, thirty six thousand agents. I just I just um, guess it, too. It, so. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's in the in the in the Colorado Front Range. So we have we have a ton of agents. And we got a ton here in Dallas Fort Worth. So I know the struggle for. You know, our team, when, when we were more active and in talking to agents who are in other larger markets, is how on earth do you separate yourself, remain consistent with your branding and differentiate yourself, like you said, apart from those 30,000 agents? Because it's obviously saturated. There's tons of agents. Well, there's and it's and it's, it's always evolving and changing. Uh, we haven't ran a newspaper ad for five years seven years, eight years. I think if I went to my staff and asked them to run an ad, they would ask me how to do it. So it's just been that long. Um, social media has obviously changed the game. Um, but when you look at all of the different platforms, uh, all of the platforms are changing as well. And so it's a matter of just staying on your game and, and making sure that you're relevant and gaining ongoing authority. So, um, so we do a lot of video. We shoot a lot of different video and a lot of content. What I found was is whether you're attracting agents or you're trying to attract a buyer or a seller, it's really the same formula. You just got to change the message. And one of the things back in uh, spring of last of last year, uh, Trell and I uh, flew down and spent time with him with John and and Jay and, and Mike, and we were really talking about uh, marketing strategies and what we wanted to do. And that's really where the live life on offense piece all came together because we started talking about. Um, you know, how do we move the needle? How do we drive? What's sort of the mental model? And that's really where we started white, writing things down on the, on the whiteboard. And uh, it all just sort of came out of is sort of the, you know, the methodology. And so when we created the Live Life on Offense brand, it was really about how do we, how do we help our agents? But, you know, even more so, even how do we help entrepreneurs and just really give back? And so when you come from a place of abundance, it, it's really a game changer. And I remember, um, you know, back in the day when, you know, when I was at Remax, you know, which was a great experience, but it was more so just really going back, you know, 10 years, you didn't share your strategies. You didn't go around and tell everyone what was working. You like, you know, made sure you had everything all up and sure. down so no one could copy it. Today's different. I mean, we just, you know, we just, we share everything we do. And obviously that's why we're on the call today. Um, so it's, it's really about, um, about building your authority is really what, is, what has helped us. Um, on the uh, and doing a lot of video content and adding a lot of value to the to the consumers and the agents. Yeah, that's a great that's a great point. And um, you know, it's just that mental shift moving from you know a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset, and understanding that you know laying all of your of your content laying it all out there because the reality is is that. 97, 98 percent of the people aren't going to do anything with it. They're not going to act on it. They're not. It doesn't. It just doesn't. They're just not going to. So, being able to articulate your value um, as as much as you can, especially in such a distraction oriented world that we live in, is that you know there's so much noise. And it's just when you it was it was interesting when you were saying that waiting for that one CD, right, consuming <laughs> one bit of content all the way through. Whereas now, how hard is it for somebody to consume one piece of content all the way through? It just doesn't happen, right? It's just that right. bite-sized information, and they're not getting the full effect from it, and then being able to implement it into their business. So, that being able to have that skill set, I mean, that's a competitive advantage these days if you're able to to, to consume and and you know take action. Well, and so many people are into instant gratification, and I believe that as a as a team leader, it's really important to help them and guide them through the process and the journey. So when we look at bringing team, uh, team new team members on, 
you know, we have a, we have a 90 day ramp up of here's what 90 days looks like. Here's what success looks like. So, you know, here's what the ideal day looks like. So when you build, you know, as John always says, when you make sure that you take all the white space out of your calendar, uh, you fill it in and you put in prospecting. Well, who are you going to call? You know, are you calling sellers? Are you calling buyers? What data set? What, you know, what's the ideal time? So really setting your agents up for success. And that really sort of rolls into, you know, the, a piece of the culture as well, because it's the accountability. And so we consistently will do morning huddles where we start off with positive thought. We then go into uh, their top three clients. We then go into what their goal, is, goal for the week is. And then, uh, you know, mid, mid, you know, then the midweek call and the end of the call, we change it up a little bit. Uh, once a week, we do a rhythm meeting with each agent. So that way, the goal there is, is we're working on the business. And so we're saying, okay, um, last week when we talked, when we talked, here's what your goals were. Here's what your struggles were. And here, here was the takeaways. What have you done since then to improve and move the needle? So we don't talk right. about inspection issues and things like that. It's strictly on their business. And so when you can really dive in and really, take ownership and really help them on a very personal level. It elevates the culture, the relationships. And, uh, you know, I was told that, uh, you know, one of my agents, Matt was with me for gosh, nine years. And our biggest struggle through the years was, is we always had that lid on the opportunity jar. It just kept mm. sneaking back. It's like, how do you throw that lid away and just ongoing create opportunities? Because when there's perceived value from the, from your agents, then they're going to stay with you. But as soon as that perceived value leaves, then so so does the agent. Mm -hmm. Well put. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of nuggets there. I mean, video, I just came off of a call where we were talking about video. So um, that's just a consistent theme these days for sure. And I know that you're having a lot of success with that. You've also been able to leverage some people um, that are around you, you know, not just local celebrities like Terrell Davis, but I know that you've been successful at developing some vendor relationships as well that not only I'm sure help those uh, vendors, but also have made an impact to your bottom line. And so I would love it if you could just share kind of what you've done in that respect and hopefully it gives somebody listening the framework and the confidence to maybe start uh, getting something like that going for themselves as well. Sure, absolutely. So I go back probably Man, 15 years ago, uh, one of my lenders, I sent him, that particular lender, I sent him 62 loans that year. And at the end of the year, I think he took me out. We had beers or something like that. And he's like, man, I really appreciate it. He might even bought me a steak dinner. I don't, I can't remember. But anyway, I'm like, I, got, I went home that night and I'm like, you know what? That was an expensive outing. The 60, whatever I said, one or two deals. I'm like, I, I had to generate all of those deals. I'm like, where in the hell was his checkbook then? And so um, the following week, I'm like, this thing has to change. So basically what we've done since that turning point is, is we approach it in a matter with our, with our lenders, especially is we say, okay, here's the deal. We have a, we have a marketing relationship where I'm not going to be the one that's going to write the whole check. So we, we jointly to go together. They're going to, they, they, uh, we have a marketing relationship where they're going to participate as well. So we're both spending ad dollars to generate the marketing opportunities. Um, we do all of the conversion. And then obviously the, the, uh, the opportunity goes back to them. The key is a lot of, and this is my experience, a lot of lenders will say, well, I want to call them. I want to call them. Like it doesn't work that way. We call them because that's, that's our wheelhouse. Um, so it starts with the, the call when we, and I can just go into the script if you want me to. Um, but so when we're on the phone, uh, we set the appointment and then I'll say, hey, by the way, Jeff, do you have a relationship with a lender? It doesn't matter if they say yes or no. I say the reason I ask is, is we have a couple of of, uh, of uh, preferred lenders that we work with that we have a relationship with, uh, with, with on average are saving our clients anywhere from twenty five to forty five hundred dollars in closing costs. Would that be a value to you? And then everybody, I say ninety nine percent of them say yes. Say super. Will you be available for the next, you know, next hour or so? I'm gonna have one of them reach out to you and uh, and uh, give you a call. It takes 10, 15 minutes, and they're just gonna give it some generic information. And I, I'm not I'm not concerned at all about your qualification. The reason I want them that we want to get this out of the way is is once we find the right home, it's really important that we're able to, that I can shoot them a text, you know, shoot the lender a text message to get that prequal letter to submit with your offer because we're in a very competitive market. 
Also, we want to make sure that we identify the, the right loan program that's going to work based upon the goals that we've talked about. And then number three is, is sometimes we have the opportunity to negotiate closing costs. And if we do have that opportunity, we want to make sure that we, we don't ask for too much, but we also don't ask for too little. So do you see why that would be important? They say yes, and then um, that's then. So I've really I've already built that up. One of the other things you could add in there is is, is uh, you could say based upon the amount of volume we that we do with our lender, you know they're able to save our clients, and not only are they going to do an amazing job, give you a competitive interest rate, uh, but because they're dominant, they're a dominant lender in in our market, it will make a difference when it comes to multiple offers. So way to tee it yeah, up. I love that. I did some quick math. You paid him well over two hundred thousand dollars that year. So, uh, yeah, that's, was, why you, that's why you bought me such a nice cake. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Um, you have anything there, kitchens, that you wanted to ask? No, I mean that's fantastic there, and understanding, you know, uh, create creating that additional leverage. I I, I would say too, you know, um, the 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 lessons learned with the with the leverage and the key people around you, right, and and what you've learned over the years and who's the ideal people, um, especially in today's, in today's marketing focus, you know, who right. it's starting to evolve a little bit, right? Who you need to have with you around you when you equip, right? So, you know, your job as a leader at this point, one of the key things as a leader is to build the team, right? Equip yourself um, and build the, build the right team around you. That's going to align to hit your goals. Um, definitely talk a little bit about that because you've, We've evolved over the years with those key people, and um, I think it's a I think it's a huge. There's going to be some definitely some good nuggets for everybody listening in um, as you talk through this. Absolutely. So um, when we went through the whole onboarding process, uh, we first start with how do we attract the right agent, and it really goes into running the right ad. Um, how do you how do you run the right ad to attract the right person with the right skill set? The second thing is 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 we also have them do the disc profile. The disc profile is huge because it, for whatever reason, um, I would say 80% of the people that apply, their, their D, which is the driver piece, is extremely low. On, on, from zero to 100, it's like maybe 10 to 20. And then you get people that have super high I's or super high S's, um, which in my experience, super high I's are people that are talkers, but not necessarily doers if they don't have any if they don't have much of a D. So really leveraging the disc person, the disc profile, because over the years when we when we don't follow the process is when we make the wrong hire and the wrong hires are brutal when it comes to agents because they everyone wants leads um, and everyone wants that you want you to set appointments. The challenge I had there was is we were we were getting plenty of leads and we were setting plenty of appointments, but all of a sudden my relationship with the agent was very was very elastic to the lead flow. So when leads go down, my relationship wasn't there. When the leads are up, they were happy. But what happened is they continue to cherry pick. So yep. what we've done is, is we've really worked hard on making sure that we teach them right up front how to be successful on the scripts, the dialogue, and even showing them, here's how you generate leads. Here's how you talk to your influencers. So from an agent attraction standpoint, it's been, that's been really key is making sure you have the right profile and you, ha you set the expectations. Um, from an admin standpoint, um, you know, that's evolved as well. And, and it went from having a closing coordinator, a listing coordinator, and, you know, and a person that does some marketing to Jordan, which is our marketing, was our marketing coordinator, is now taking our, our game to a whole new level. And she has really expanded her knowledge on um, all of the video, uh, all the video content, social media platforms, and really trying to invest back into our, into our people because that's where the game's at is again on video content. And then Tanya, which is our closing coordinator. I mean, she's just taking, you know, she just takes that consumer experience to the whole new level. And, you know, she, we contribute a lot of things with our testimonial videos and, and testimonials uh, from clients and so forth. Um, we get raving reviews from her as well. So really pouring back into your people, uh, but investing and, and really focusing on the consumer experience and the agent experience. Man, there was a lot there. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of good nuggets. I, I think too, I think the big lesson there is, is one is make sure you have a hiring process in place and make sure you follow it um, to, to the, to the key, um, to the T. Um, I just, I've seen too many times to where great organizations have 
crumbled because they they bring somebody on board and don't and don't follow the hiring process. So that's I mean, if you take anything away from all of the nuggets that are coming today, have a hiring process and follow it. Um, the other the other thing there is, um, you know, we get we get asked a lot and, and it's just like, you know, Kev, what you just shared, how it's evolved. We used to, you know, our firm belief was that you've got to have that key admin as a leverage piece first, right? First and foremost. And then it was maybe you get a buyer's agent, maybe, maybe not. And then when cash is right, we make that ISA higher. I, I would almost be willing to, uh, to say, you know what? I think my second key hire is going to be a marketing, a dynamic marketing person that understands uh, how, to, how to shoot video and how to edit and create video and turn it into multiple content. Um, because it just, just as, as things are evolving so fast, um, to be able to have that as a leverage piece could, could, could propel you super fast. <laughs> I, I, I agree a hundred percent is in it at, in the last, gosh, I only want, I didn't want to say 12 months, last six months. Um, when we look at what Jordan's day to day uh, activities are, they've changed dramatically and dramatic. it really has. Um, so when you look at Instagram, Facebook, I mean, anyone can post an ad, but it's, it's, it's now just like it was last week, the algorithms and things are changing, especially on how you can run ads and market in real estate. There's some new announcements done. So really being able to stay on top of all those key strategies. Um, I go back to when I first did my org chart, I actually was talking to uh, talking to you about it, John, and even Jay was, was, I looked at that org chart and I was trying to figure out, okay, here's who all the hires are. Man, I I threw that thing away because that's it's way out of whack now. I mean, it's, yep. it's, it's you know, I was having a conversation um, with uh, uh, there was a couple of us talking and we were like, and I think it was actually it was Jay and Michael Mesquila, and we were talking about if you had to start completely over, would you? And if it was you and your and your admin, you got because uh, you and your key admin, and you start completely over, would you hire? Uh, would you go hire agents or would you go hire an ISA first? What would you do? And Jay says, well, I'd hire an ISA because they could set appointments for me and I'm going to be in my key key position of closing deals right and left. And all the money will go right to the bottom line. I'm like, okay, but you still got to generate the opportunities, you know, which is your marketing gal. And then Mike says, well, he goes, if it was me, I'd go hire agents and I'd be the ISA because I believe in, in, uh, in a life by design and life by strategy. So I could be the ISA making calls in my condo while I ski in, I can make it at home, um, you know, in between, you know, my kids watching cartoons, you know, I can control my environment and I'm really good on the phone setting appointments. And then, I, and it'd be easier for me to train agents to close the deals because they're high quality appointments that I'm setting. So I tend to lean a little bit more towards them, which is what I'm doing right now is, is I'm on the phone and I'm just setting appointments. And I, essentially I'm the ISA right now because um, it is hard to find uh, to find somebody a high quality uh, ISA in that position. But when you have a key person in the marketing role that's all of a sudden generating qual high quality leads, you're building authority. Because before it was here, click on this link and you get it. You get the buyer. Well, if you have no authority built, they're going to go to somebody else. So it really, all goes back to building authority and building the brand. But you need somebody also trained to give you that exposure. So let me ask you about that because um, I mean, there's a lot we could, we could dig into there. But so talk about your authority campaigns. I know that your approach right now is at least one part of it is to really through goodwill build that authority. You're creating helpful and useful content targeted towards your specific audience, not with the intention of them downloading that report, not with the intention of them scheduling an appointment, really just with the intention of them getting to know you and to recognize you as the authority. And so like how many times a day are you posting? How many times a week? Like what are the mechanics of that? So that somebody watching this can go, okay, you know, I just can follow this system. They, they got to create the content still, but if you can give them kind of the framework that you're using, because I know you're seeing the impact versus and we all have had a change in mindset, right? I used to pay ads to get conversion. I used to pay, run ads to get conversion versus if I'm trying to build authority in my marketplace, it may be a good idea to think about uh, making the objective reach versus conversion. But then, you know, how many times do I need to be doing it, Kevin? 
Well, and you just you just brought something up right at the end there that I'm guessing 80 or 90 percent of the people watching don't know what you just said, which was when you're running ads, you use conversion or you do reach. That's why you have the marketing person, because I didn't know all of those little pieces of it until, uh, gosh, uh, when John was out with Alex and Alex was teaching us all this Facebook stuff. And I'm like, Jordan knew it, but I didn't. And so there's, it's so complex on how you, how you, you can go spend a ton of money, but are you really getting the right audience? So to answer your question on the, on the, on the video piece is ideally you want to be running, you want to shoot one video, uh, you want to be posting at least one video a day on multiple platforms. Um, what we're doing right now is, is we're, we're shooting uh, typically on the weekend. I will try to shoot multiple videos. Um, so that way we have uh, we have content to go throughout the week, and I'm trying to build that content library. But essentially, you can repurpose that content. So you can shoot a longer video, and then you could take, say you shoot a video for 10, 15, 20 minutes, then you can repurpose and take little nuggets out of it and put that into Instagram or uh, you know Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and, and, and all those different platforms. Some of the hardest things are is what do you say? Um, and that was my initial piece was, is, is I, I don't have that many things to talk about. What I found is, is, is whether you're trying to attract an agent, a buyer or a seller, again, it's the same process, just, a, it's just different. It's just a different message. And so, uh, it's very typical when I shoot a, an agent, uh, something I could give back to an agent, I'll shoot a buyer or seller one. And the easiest time for me is, is when I walk out of an appointment, many of times you walk out of an appointment, I just share a story of, of maybe not necessarily an objection, but a concern that my client had in that appointment. So I walk back, I get in my car and I just share the conversation. Like, you know, I just, you know, an hour ago just came back and I had some clients that have been in their home a long time. They refinanced, sucked a lot of equity out to pay off some consumer debt. And then uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, the salesman knocked on the door and had solar, they sold them solar panels on the roof because they're going to be there a long time. Now they owe $24,000 on their solar panels and they have to be getting relocated to, uh, to uh, Austin, Texas. And they're upside down in their house by $15,000. So how do, you, how do you structure that and get them out of that? So again, that's just a conversation that you have with, you know, whether you, you know, sharing value to the agent or sharing value to the consumer of, of the do's and don'ts and, what, and pitfalls and what to look for. So again, it's just going leading in with value. So we share the value and then, uh, what we're also doing is, is we're layering in where we'll give them a, give them a site to go to. If you'd like to learn more about, you know, the top 10 tips on, on what to do before, you know, before you list your home, click the link below and we've created e-guides for that or ebooks. Mm. That's fantastic. It's just kind of repurposing that content, but it's almost as if, you know, you know, like what, what Gary, what Gary talks about all the time, it's easier to document than create. And so essentially you're just documenting your experiences with, real world situations with clients and situations that other other people are in and you're just you're just sharing that and talking through the strategy of how we could come about and so so it is a little bit more of of documenting than 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 creating which is a, a whole lot easier right a whole lot easier Absolutely. so that's fantastic well, well and so many people get stuck on again um you you'll overthink it i will overthink it for a for a for a lot of years and that's why we waited so long to shoot video because we uh, one thing it was it was interesting. I was at a, a workshop with Mike, and and Mike's like the thing that you, the, the the block you have in your head is is that you you believe that everyone else knows know, and you don't think what you know is that important. And then when you start getting in front of agents and really helping them and and helping new agents and and even existing agents to start sharing strategies and you know gosh uh, you know gal 17 years was in the business and was struggling i started talking to her about a few things and said well what about this what about that and she's like i never thought of that i'm like holy crap really you know so there so you do take as a as an agent has been in a while you take certain things for granted um yeah. of how people can really go to the next level with their business yeah no, that's fantastic i think you know it's just a good reminder you know you never want to assume intelligence for the other person right just never never assume that and you know, us as humans, we need to be reminded more than we be, need to be told. So, you know, just depending mm -hmm. upon where people are at in their in the season of their life, they're they're only comprehending and listening to what's important to them at the moment. So it could be something that they've heard three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve times, whatever. But it could be that that eleventh, that thirteenth, that fourteenth time that they hear it that it 
that it, they get it and it really has a positive impact on their life. So um, I think that's, you know, as, as leaders, sometimes, and especially that D driver, we have a hard time um, repeating ourselves, being okay with repeating ourselves. So it's just a skill set and just, just understand and be okay with it. Um, and, you know, cause it takes multiple times. We don't tell our kids to make the bed one time and they make it, make it for the rest of their lives. So um, it's just a good, right. good, good principle. And uh, becoming I like, you know, Kevin said he's making the calls. He's his own ISA right now. So he's learning to repeat himself a lot. <laughs> right? uh, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, but man, it's, it is that I felt, I mean, I struggle with the same thing sometimes. And um, I, I feel you, Kevin, when Mike was like, you know, you just don't think that what you're saying, cause it is easy to think, man, you know, everybody knows or they've heard this or whatever, but um, you know, he's absolutely right. And like kitchens was saying like anything that you've ever done in your life that had a major impact, it, probably wasn't that you just heard it and then went and did it. It was something that it was on your doorstep five years ago. It was on your doorstep three years ago. It was on your doorstep two years ago. It was on your doorstep a year ago. And finally it was on your doorstep that day when it had built enough, you know, points or however you want to refer to it that you decided to make a decision or it just, it was there when life coincided with, with the value that it offered and you just never know. Yeah when that is and uh, going to repeating yourself, you know, you make your life so much easier. Kevin's saying, you know, he's probably on the phone using his expert advisor scripts, talking about having a proven and repeatable system that is backed by market research to help you get more money for your home. And, it, and as he's used to that saying it on the phone, when he does a video, he's going to repeat the same thing and it's smooth like butter because it's what he says all day long. Anyhow, when he all needs to write some copy for an ad, guess what? It's the same thing. So if you can become really good at repeating the really good things you have to say, it makes creating any piece of content or having any kind of conversation a lot easier, I think. And what do you think, Kevin? You know, absolutely. And it's really just coming from a if you if you come from a mindset of just being genuine and wanting to help um, and just and just being real um, and that's that's the it's, people don't want to they don't want they don't want to talk to a salesperson they just want help so when you understand their problem you ask the right questions and then you just you shut up and listen and let them talk you know that that's huge and you know that goes it, it's just all the basics you know going back to you know, having everything in front of you, but not really taking advantage of it. Um, I was with an agent last week that's going to be joining our team and they haven't been in the business long, but they were calling FISBOs and expireds. First thing they did. And I said, well, you know, what are you looking for in a team? What do you think the, the, you know, the top things that would make you successful are? And they said, well, if I had a lot of leads and all the technology to like to do all that stuff, and uh, somebody to hold me accountable. I was like, okay, well, you haven't been in the business long, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pass, but I think you're in the right, wrong order. Um, I said, let me ask you a few things. Have you, have you built your database out with all the people that know, love, and trust you? Uh, no, not yet. Have you, um, have you sent an announcement letter or announced it on social media, letting, you, letting people know you're in the business? Uh, no, not yet. It's like, so, so many people start in the wrong areas and they're not hitting the low lying, low lying, low lying fruit, which is just, you know, is 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 starting with your influencers, meeting with your influencers, and then building from there. Man, so run down those three things right there that you just said. So starting off with, you said uh, so um, letting everybody know. So walk through those again. Okay, so one you know, is build your database. So make sure you get everybody in your database that know, loves, and trusts you. Then number two is. Oh, as you got to build, you have to, you have to build your, your Facebook profile. I forgot to layer that one in. You need your Facebook profile and you need to start having content in there. So whether you're out um, driving through a new construction area, take a picture, take a video saying, you know, touring it, you know, heading through a new in a neighborhood, get ready to show, show property. Um, take a picture of your rear view mirror, your side view mirror with the homes in the back saying, you know, checking out homes in the neighborhood. Just, take pictures of open house signs, just let people know you're in the industry because um, they, when, if the people know you, they're going to start seeing things. Uh, they're going to start seeing you, the, the social media feed. And then when you set up your database, you need your, uh, a, a memorable URL on your database because when you do get a client, you need to send them somewhere to look for property. When they Google your name, you have to show up. So you have to have a presence. So 
set the database with a URL, Facebook profile, and then you make your announcements, letting everyone know I'm in real estate. This is what I'm doing. But then when you're, you, then as you do the content daily, people are going to see it. They're going to see, man, Kevin's really busy. You know, they may not tell you, but they're, it's going to be in their mind that they're going to see you. And then they're going to remember to call you and then meeting with their influencers. So then just going out on, on that, you know, two to three times a week, meeting with the, with your influencers, don't meet them. Don't go to lunch because lunch you're stuck for an hour. You do coffee you, or you do a, you know, do an after work beverage, whatever it is. But then there's, there's, there's a, uh, not a defining ending point. You can leave early or not. Um, and then the second thing there is, is that you, you ideally want to go pick them up at their place of work. And then you, if they're a true influencer that really cares about you, then they're going to say, Hey, Jeff, um, I'm going to just stop by and pick you up at the office. Would you mind maybe introducing me to anybody that you feel will be influential in, in your company? Um, cause I'm just trying to build relationships. And then you, they introduce you. Now you have another contact. Those people go in your database and now they're going to start seeing all the, all of the content that you're putting out there. Man, I love that. And I just want to point out one thing that uh, you mentioned earlier that I thought was a great idea is you, when you're walking out of an appointment with somebody while you're in the moment, just recording that on video. I think that's a huge takeaway. It makes it so much easier to create content. And then I just keep that in mind, right? Everything I'm doing throughout the day, is it something that would be valuable for somebody to watch? Because I'm already doing it. So why not, you know, why not get it uh Get it on record and i think it makes content creation a whole lot easier so absolutely you mentioned about um stuff that obviously you're doing online and i know we had talked about a strategy that has definitely made an impact for you over the last 12 months and it's related to something that you're doing that's a little bit different even a little different than what we were doing when we were um, investing a lot of money into seller lead generation and you're doing something with your home value campaigns that's a little different and I know that those of uh, those of you, the attendees that are here with us towards the end of the call, he's going to share with us exactly what he's doing. So you'll get a free gift download uh, attending this. But why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing that's working in that area? Kevin? Sure. So what we've been doing is we've been running, uh, we've been changing up the home home evals. Now we're in the spring market. Obviously, that's top of mind for a lot of a lot of air, people, especially people in our area, because we're coming off of winter. So we're going to start seeing things green up here. So we, uh, we've been running home eval, home eval leads, but when we run the, the, the home evals on, we typically will do it on Facebook. We run the ad and then obviously when they fill it out, we, we give them a call and respond and just make sure that they were, you know, see if they were looking for a, a, a broad, a broad price point, a broad range, or if they're looking for something more specific. The goal is, is to convert them to a, to a face to face appointment. And if we can't convert them, then we, uh, we send out a letter. It's the dear seller letter. And the dear seller letter basically says, um, Hey, we have, we've been showing property in your neighborhood and we have a, we have a family, um, that is, uh, that really, that we, we have a, we have a family that really is looking to move in your neighborhood and wanted to know if you would, you know, if you would consider selling or if you knew of anybody that would. Um, they're, they're a young family with a six and a 10 year old. They're very flexible on, very f flexible on move in dates. Um, you know, something like that. And I actually, I can show you guys a copy of the, of the letter too, but we send that letter out to them that typically will generate anywhere from three to five, six calls, return calls or inbound calls a week. Um, and so obviously when they're calling in the typical conversation is, is, Hey, you know, do you still have that buyer? And then we, uh, we go into, um, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about your home? I'd uh, be happy to, you know, happy to run a, run a buy them. But, you know, would there be a time I could possibly come by and take a look at your home so that way I could identify if it's going to be the right fit for them? You know, because if it doesn't work for them, we also have other other buyers and clients that we're working with um, that really want to be in that area. And as you know, it's a very desirable neighborhood. The inventory has been very low and we've convert that into a face to face appointment. If they at that point, they don't convert there. Um, uh, then, uh, then we have, then we still have them on our database and then they're going to start getting all of our content videos as well. I love it. Uh, do you have an example by chance that you could uh, show us? Sure. Let me pull it up here.
I think it's a good, good strategy because I can when we were when we were calling home value leads, we had an ISA team of um, you know at one point close to fifteen ISAs and calling the home value leads, or we would be able to achieve a contact rate probably of twenty six percent or so just making phone calls. But, you know, there are those people, A, that you didn't have a good phone number for, but you had a good address. Or there's just the people that you never got a hold of. So if I got 26% contact rate, I can pay 25% were probably wrong numbers or didn't have anything. So there's junk. And I probably have, you know, 50% left that just never, we never made touch with. And so what Kevin is doing allows me not only to expand on anybody that I do contact, right? So if I had a phone conversation that didn't result in scheduling an appointment, I compound that top of mind awareness and the connection to that phone call by three days later, them getting this dear sales letter, their dear seller letter. And then if it's somebody that I hadn't talked to who's in that not contacted category still in my database, it gives me the opportunity to get those people engaged so in theory, out of those 100 leads where I would have only spoken to 26, Kevin's likely to end up engaging 56 or whatever the number is, I can tell you, using this strategy. So you go ahead, Kevin. I just wanted to share my thoughts on that. I think it's an awesome idea. Sure. Can you see that, sc can you see that screen okay? Um, no. Well, I did something wrong. There we go. All right. Okay. All right. So this is this is just a, a glimpse of some of the branding that we did on our live life on offense piece. Mm -hmm. um, that gives you an idea of just from an authority standpoint of of the book that we're doing just to build authority and, and credibility, some of our podcasts. Um, so here's the, here's the letter. So one of our clients is looking specifically in your neighborhood and noticed your beautiful home during a drive through in, a, in the area this week. Their family is in the market to purchase a home in the front range area. Unfortunately, none of the homes currently listed for sale meet their criteria. And we're writing specific property owners to see if they have interest in selling. These two clients have children ages six and 10. We're curious if you had any interest in selling your property in the near future. Um, so that's been a very effective letter. I love that. So uh, would you share that? Do you have a copy of that letter that we could share with anybody who's on the call with us? Yep, absolutely. I'll make sure I get it over to you, Jeff. Awesome. So anybody who's on the call with us today who wants uh, to use that letter as a model, just drop a chat in the comment section or drop a comment in the comment section if you're with us on Facebook. And uh, if you're with us live, drop a chat in the chat box or you can email us uh, as a last resort if you're not seeing this on Facebook or live. And then what uh, what, you, what have you got there? Um, so, so the... Um let me get, so this is an example of, of one of, a, this is a testimonial, and this is actually was one from one of the, uh, the a recent boot camp that we did, but this is just an example of an ad that we, that will run to basically give authority, uh, to build authority. So we're not asking, we're not asking for anything. This is just basically just a, a testimonial video, but we do the same thing for our clients. And then uh, this next piece is our, um, this is one of our uh, our ebooks, and we we leverage uh, Keeping Current Matters. And with Keeping Current Matters, there's all kinds of different content that we're able to pull from them. But we also yep. created other ebooks as well that um, on you know buyers, sellers, top tips, tricks, things like that. Kev, how are you using that? When are you sending that out? Are you using um, a call to action on it, or it, what's uh, kind of what's your process to be sending that out? So we'll do we'll do that on our on our home eval. So the home eval, uh, when they come in on the home eval, 
we will then uh, we will then send out the we will then send out the ebook on you know top ten things uh, to do before you get your you know to get your home ready to sell things like that. So we'll just send them that uh, send them that link, and it could be sometimes we'll send an email saying you know if we could ever help you in the future, let us know. But you know get a free copy of our ebook. Uh, sometimes we will have uh, we'll we'll do a, a reach ad on Facebook, and we'll send we'll do a little we'll do an ad. Uh, promoting these eBooks on doing more of a reach campaign. So our goal is just to get a lot of impressions and that, and then, and then when they go through this eBook at the bottom of the eBook, there's also going to be a, another link that they can, uh, that they, they can click on for market trends. You know, if, you know, if you like, you know, you know, click here to subscribe to our market trends to keep up to date on all of the changes, not only in the market, but in your specific neighborhood. And then again, we're just trying to build, build our following. And then the um, in that audience. Next, uh, this next one is my internet's a little slow here, so I apologize. Um, and then the next one that's going to pop up is going to be the uh, uh, one of our client testimonial ads. So we uh, ongoing, and Facebook will continue to run uh, will run our testimonial ads with uh, with our clients as well. And what uh, what is your I think. Uh, do you happen to know? And I just and here's my takeaway for anybody who doesn't know. So what he's doing right now with these campaigns is super, super cheap. My guess is like so you're probably looking at your cost per thousand, right, or something like that. Um, do you happen to know what your costs are running these reach campaigns? You know, I I, I would I need to check with Jordan on the exact numbers. Yep. I know we we set our budget at like five bucks a day for some of these testimonial ones, but we're we're going we're broadcasting it out to. Oh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, 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 of evals, people that came in on evals, and we'll even put it out to for sale by owners as well as expired. Uh, the, the whole goal is, is to build the campaign. That's it. You get that audience. And so my, my guess is that it's probably, I mean, we just did one for our upcoming boot camp, and I can tell you that we had 60,000 people or so um, that it reached, and we spent less than 200 bucks. So you can do the math on that. We reached 60,000 people for less than 200 bucks. There's no way in heck for if we were trying to run a, a click or conversion campaign, getting people to click, it would no way, no way near. Now, you know, you, I think it's a combination. You take all the authority that you gain by running these campaigns like Kevin is doing here and you find ways to track that consumption and find those people that are in the decision stage and maybe then you present them with a call to action about an offer. But man, what you're doing right here, Kevin, and, and how many pieces of content are part of this campaign? So you, you run your home eval ad and then, and then you, uh, so when they register, then the, then the second one is going to be the ebook. And then the third one is going to be the, the, the sign up for the market trends. And then the, the final one will be the, uh, the testimonial, the testimonial vi uh, videos, or a video, or just the the, uh, the still picture ads that will run, and then they also get the the letter. So that's then, uh, six touches, right? I mean, that's yes. six touches in a pre-built campaign that I cannot imagine is not, you know, is it, I mean, it's making an impact. He can tell us for sure, but so that's something somebody can model right there, exact step by step. Those six things. When new leads come in, and like Kevin said, you can use it for FISBOs, expireds, whatever, right? Absolutely. And and one of the things I just popped up on the screen is this is an example of of when we were doing our boot camp, but it, this is an example of 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 borrowed authority. So when you're working with people uh, and you have the opportunity to to go live and with somebody that that succeeding uh, at a high level with the you know. Um, out of out of Atlanta, um, giving testimonials on the boot camp, but the testimonials go a long, long way, and it's just a it's a great opportunity to have borrowed authority and just uh, continue to um, to increase your uh, increase your authority in the market. I love it. I love it. Um, kitchens, anything? I know we're getting here uh, to the end of our scheduled time with Kevin today. I think there's like um, a full notepad of stuff, like three exact strategies that I could go copy and paste and have in place probably by the weekend. I mean, I'd have to be shooting a lot of content, but, but I think yeah. the framework is there to really 
um, have something you can go use, not just sit here and talk theoretical about how we're going to build goodwill. Kevin's given us the exact framework plus a couple assets like that letter. If anybody wants to hit us up to get that, what do you think, Kitchens? No, I think it's I think it's fantastic, um, Kevin. Definitely appreciate you uh, you sharing and and um, you know really laying that out for everybody. So that's a that's a great a great strategy there. I think you know the key you know, is, is determining what is the, what is the goal, um, back to, you know, who's going to be making the calls. Ideally for most, they need to be making the calls and they need to be going on the appointments themselves and, you know, leveraging, leveraging those profits to put the key people around you. Um, definitely from an administrative standpoint and then also from, um, a key marketing standpoint. And I think, I, I, I think the answer is, yeah, your ISA and, and closer until you're at capacity and then then you've got to make the decision you know what are you what do you naturally um kind of slide into right it's easy um I, that that's jay's answer jay's not wired like mike he doesn't want to make the calls mike's mike's a, a different animal he likes making calls right. so it's it's getting into your strength i think when you're at that point getting into what you're good at um where where your talent and um you know where where that talent and, and your your skill level kind of intersect on those high dollar activities. You know, for for Jay, it's he he's he's better out in the field, face to face, um, knee to knee, if you will, um, than than he than he is over the phone. So that's where he would gravitate to. So you just have to know where your skill set is. I think that's that self awareness and, and knowing your strengths and, and your weaknesses, and um, just making sure that they're high dollar activities is where is where you gravitate towards. So. I think there's some definitely some good, some great nuggets from this call that people can can help them connect the dots to to really push push their business to the next level. Well, and I, and I believe it's really that. coming from a, a place of abundance and really uh, trying to be real sincere about uh, our focus is is how do we have the highest level of consumer consumer experience and how do we take care of our agents at a high level and being very uh, very genuine with that. And when you're genuine and you truly care and it's not about the next deal, it's not about, uh, you know, um, you know, how many agents you can get to, to increase your net. It's, it's about helping your agents and helping your clients. It'll be a game changer. It's just, it's just the, the right mental model. It is, man. It's awesome. Well, thank you, Kevin. And, uh, and kitchens, you know, you talked about getting clear. Anybody who wants to get clear, um, you can schedule a clarity call. It's something that we do regularly. It's the first step for a lot of our coaching clients, like Kevin, who's been with us for a long time. So you can go to kinderreescoaching.com and schedule a free clarity call, and we will get on the phone with you and uh, help you identify what you need to do next and what steps um, need to be in what position so that we're doing things in the right order. So you can go to kinderreescoaching.com and schedule a free clarity call. One of our experienced managers will reach out to you and set up a time on the calendar and we'll get clear. But uh, any final words, guys? That's it. I appreciate you guys having me on. I appreciate uh, everything that you guys do. I mean, John's been instrumental in uh, being my personal coach for many years. And uh, it's all about a collaboration and, and surrounding yourself by the right people and doing modeling success. And when you model what other people do, you're not going to, hopefully you avoid some of, some of the mistakes that they made and uh, you'll get where you want to go a lot faster. Yep. And um, live life on offense. Absolutely. That's it. Awesome. Thanks guys. All, All right. right. Thank you. We'll see y'all next time for the next Asian interview. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, John. See ya. All right. Thanks.